Welcome back to Upside Down Data. Let's talk about Cardano. Cardano is somewhat of an interesting asset in the crypto space in that it has a lot of followers who really like it, but also a lot of detractors. And so there's a lot of drama that can play out in the discussions around crypto about ADA. But I don't really care about that. What I care about are the data and what they suggest for where ADA is right now and where it might be going next. So let's go ahead and get into that. I want to start off by talking about some on-chain data that we can look at. So this is on our website, ClarityDigital.io. And one of the nice things about our website is that it's somewhat unique in that it has a lot of on-chain data for a lot of different altcoins that really isn't available elsewhere. So that's what I'm showing you here. Right now, we're looking at the realized price for ADA. And so realized price is basically the average cost basis of ADA on the network. So basically the idea of realized price is that when an ADA is spent, then it's spent at some price level, right? There's some price that ADA was when that ADA was spent. And when it was spent, it was acquired by someone else. So that becomes that person's cost basis. Whatever the price of ADA was when that original person spent, it becomes the cost basis of the new person who acquired it. And so when you look at across the network, the realized price basically gives you the average cost basis of everyone who holds ADA. And so this can be useful because it gives an idea of whether or not people are overall underwater or below their cost basis on ADA or if they're in profit. And so you can see that with ADA for the last cycle, for example, going all the way through here, it was under its realized price, meaning that on the whole, people were in a loss holding ADA this whole time. But then as we started to move up here, then it switched and people were on average above their cost bases. Now, what you'll notice is that there's some interesting behaviors of realized price as it goes through time. You'll notice that, for example, in the bear market here, it's sloping down, whereas in the bull market, it's moving up. And the reason for that is that in a bear market like this, what you're having happen is people who bought ADA up at these higher levels are capitulating out. They're selling down into the depths of the bear market. And what that does is it replaces a cost basis that was up here with a cost basis that was, for example, down here. And that'll bring the average down. That's why this is moving down. This is basically a sign that people earlier on from higher cost bases are selling, which brings the average cost basis down. Then vice versa, when you see price start to move up like this, and then the realized price move up with it, that means that people who had bought down at these lower levels are now selling at these higher levels. So you're replacing a low cost basis with a higher one, and that brings the overall average up or the overall realized price up. And so that's where you can kind of get this sign of what are people doing and where is the selling coming from? Is the selling coming from lower levels or higher levels overall based on how the realized price is moving? Now, interestingly, this bear market into the beginning of this new bull market is looks very similar to what happened in the last cycle. This downward sloping realized price as people who had bought up at the highs are selling and it's being replaced with cost basis down here that is lower. And then you're also noticing that price has now gone up to meet it, just like it did here at the early stages of this bull market right here. And we can also actually overlay an additional realized price here, which is basically the shorter term holder realized price. So this is anything uh, before about 180 days, right around what people consider to be short-term holders of an asset. So the ones who have only been holding ADA for basically six months or less. And you'll notice another similarity here where we saw that the short-term holder realized price dipped below the total realized price in the bear market, like we saw back here. And then now it's come back up to meet it, much like it did here as well. So this is going to be interesting to watch how this plays out. Now, I'm not one who's saying that because some pattern played out in the last cycle means it just has to play out exactly the same again. And so I'm not going to sit here and say that this is any kind of definitive evidence that we are at this stage of the cycle and about to have this big explosion to the upside. But certainly, I think it's an interesting thing to watch that's been playing out so similarly. And at the very least, what this is telling us is that overall, people are in the short term, in loss in general and overall in loss in general right now because we're below both the total and the short-term holder realized price. But we're at this interesting point where those two have now met each other. And this is a pretty important level. And so if we can flip above it and then maybe hold it as support, that might be a sign of notable strength where not just the short-term holders might step in to defend that level, but frankly, the entire network might see that uh, level as being important in aggregate 
which maybe could then set a base for a more notable move up. Now that's going to be dependent on what broader markets do and if they remain conducive to risk assets. But I think we're at an interesting point here. What you wouldn't want to see is a further breakdown well below these levels. That would be a clear break from what we saw before. And it would just be a suggestion that people are now suddenly getting into extreme loss. And you run the risk of something like what happened in the bear market happening again, where people who had bought maybe up here just capitulate, add more selling pressure that could push price down. So I do think this is an interesting level to watch going forward. So that's what's going on with realized price, kind of the cost bases on the network and where we stand right now. So not in big explosive bull market territory, but not in depths of bear market territory either by any stretch of the imagination. All right, so now another piece of data I wanna talk about is active addresses on the Cardano network. And I think this is a useful one to keep an eye on because it really tells you about activity. It tells you how many people are actually using the network. So the blue line here is basically the number of active addresses in a 24 hour period. And the red line here is just simply the simple moving average of that over a 30 day period, just to smooth out some of the noise. Well, you can notice that in the prior cycle, we saw this notable uptick in active addresses really right around when the parabolic price movement started is when you saw this notable uptick in active addresses. And then going into the later stages of 2021 is really when we saw that peak in network activity. Then as we went into the bear market, that really started to cool off, die off down into the doldrums. But notably, as we've gone into the early stages of this new cycle, we haven't seen that pick up yet. We've actually seen it just more or less continue either down or at the best sideways at these really low levels. So that's something I think would be useful to watch that maybe like last cycle, before we can really see a bull market kick off for ADA, we need to see this tick up more notably, more people actually wanting to use the network and then demanding ADA for that purpose, which would then drive speculation, so on and so forth. And really what you can see from the last cycle is that, you know, when we looked at this realized price chart, if imagining, again, just imagining we were at a position similar to where we were back over here right now, it does look somewhat similar where active addresses hadn't really picked up too notably yet at that point. Then it was really when this move started happening when that picked up. So I want to keep an eye on this and see, does this change? Because really, if this just stays low or especially if it falls even further, I would see that as being a concerning sign, suggesting that there's not really a lot of demand for the network showing up or a lot of new addresses or new people or entities coming into the network to use it. So something I'm gonna be keeping an eye on for sure. Now, let's go ahead and switch to a different type of metric to get a sense of the health of Cardano or kind of how it stands right now. And that is total value locked in DeFi. DeFi being decentralized finance. And there are many different chains that have done extremely well based on their DeFi ecosystem. So Solana, for example, was one of the ones that part of its rise was due to DeFi adoption along with things like NFT back in mid to late 2021. So Cardano currently sits down at 28, so not at the top of the stack, but certainly not at the bottom either. And one thing that is hopeful for Cardano when you just look at the total value lock data over time, is it has actually been trending up. We've actually gone ahead and seen a new high in total value locked higher than it ever got last cycle. So that is a hopeful sign. We'd like to see that continue. It has tapered off a bit more recently. I'd like to see this move up again. But that is a hopeful sign that at the very least, even if more addresses aren't active on the network, we do see potentially more funds being locked up in its DeFi sector, which could be a good sign. All right, so to wrap up, now I wanna talk about some of our models that we have here on the channel and on our website, clarity.digital.io, link in the description and what they're seeing with ADA, because they give a different perspective on the market than the things that we've just been talking about. So this is our long-term UDPI risk model. So basically it's a long-term risk model. So it cares about moves that play out over months, so multiple months, higher values mean higher risk, lower values mean lower risk. And you see it does a really good job of capturing these low risk points in ADA's history, as well as these higher risk points. So what this can really give us an idea of is what is the upside versus downside potential right now in that longer term? And you can see that, for example, as we went up into these peaks here, we were at higher risk levels. This one got all the way up to 2.52. The top of the scale is five, it goes all the way down to negative five. So pretty high risk, relatively speaking. We then kind of struggled to really go much further than that. 
And now Risk has cooled off quite a bit. And that is a good sign if you're in Ada Bull. Really in bull markets, you like to see Risk cool off because that can set the stage for more explosive continuations to the upside. And that's what we've seen now. And so that's one of those things where it wouldn't have to happen immediately by any means, but certainly the conditions are much more favorable for Ada to put in a new leg up now than it was back, for example, here in December. So I have to keep an eye on it, but that's one of the things to keep a lookout for in my view. And the other thing I can give us an idea about the medium to long-term outlook for ADA is our forecast model. So this is a model that outputs the probability of upside six months in the future for the asset. So basically how likely is it that the price in this case of ADA will be above where it is right now, six months in the future. So you see it also does a really good job of getting bullish at the right times going into bull markets and bearish going into bear markets. And then once again, as we got to the bottom of this bear market, it flipped bullish again, right before price started to rally back to the upside once again. Now, the good news is that it remains quite bullish. It currently is estimating a 91% chance that the price of ADA will be above where it is right now, six months in the future. So that's obviously not 100%, but it's a heck of a lot better than 11% or 6%, for example. So when I look at these in combination with each other, it does seem reasonable that in this bull market, we will see more upside for ADA. Now, the broader question then is how much more upside? I think that's really the question that a lot of people will be asking with ADA when they're evaluating it. And this is where the debate tends to come in with different people. The detractors will say, why would you buy ADA when you could buy Solana or some other asset that they would argue will put in more multiples? Whereas the ADA bulls will say, why would I do that? I think ADA is gonna outperform. I'm gonna leave that up to you in terms of which asset you think will outperform another one. But kind of internal to ADA, when we just look at what the data is suggesting, it does seem like some upside is warranted. But then how much upside is going to be the thing we'll have to watch as we go forward. And so if we do see that rally with ADA, I'm going to be watching these data closely and see when, for example, do we get back to really high risk levels, which might suggest that that move is tapping out or unlikely to continue. And I'm going to be watching the forecast model to see if it flips. And I'm going to stay data dependent. I'm not going to get caught up in narratives or emotion one way or the other. I'm just going to follow the data and see what it is suggesting. So overall then for ADA, I think there's some interesting things to keep an eye on here. I think realized price is in a very interesting position. And it'll be interesting to see how it plays out given how notable this position was last cycle. Same thing with active addresses. Can this reverse the upside? That might be a bullish sign. Total value locked is looking constructive. And we're also seeing from our models, there is some signs that in the longer term, upside potential is quite plausible. So obviously none of this financial advice, you should make your own view, but this is what I'm seeing across these different pieces of data right now. So if you like the content, or subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us over on X, a lot of updates, better models, and more over there. You can go to our website, partydigital.io to see live data from our models and more.